Hello class, Mr. Linder here. In this video, I want to talk about concentrations. So you're familiar with capital M, molarity. Molarity is moles per liter of solution. And so in chemistry, you did a lot with molarity. You calculated one molar hydrochloric acid uh, solutions, and you calculated two molar sodium chlorides and three molar glucose solutions, and half a molar and so forth. And that's great. Molarity is a great way to calculate concentrations. But in human physiology, we oftentimes use molality. Molality is represented by a little m. And that's moles per one liter of water. Or sometimes we say one kilogram of water. And so you may be saying, well, aren't those the same? Moles over one liter, moles over one liter. They're very similar. And in terms of calculations, uh, you actually do the math exactly the same. But in terms of how you produce these concentrations, they are different. So let me show you. In a one molar concentration, so if we were going to make a one molar sodium chloride, in order to do that, you have to know how many grams it takes to make one mole of sodium chloride. And so we get that from the periodic table. We know that sodium is 23 molecular weight and chlorine is 35.5 molecular weight. So if you add those together, that's 58.5 grams per mole. So in order to make a one molar concentration, you would weigh out, so if we had a scale, we could weigh out 58.5 grams of sodium chloride, and then we can put that sodium chloride into our flask. Now, when we add water, we're simply adding enough water so that we have one liter of solution. So the question is, do we know exactly how much water we added? And the answer is no. When you're making molar solutions, you don't know how much water you're actually adding because we're not measuring it. We're just creating a total of one liter of solution. So that's fine in most situations, but in physiology, when you're dealing with uh, the intracellular and extracellular environments being made mostly of water, we want to know how much water we're giving our patients. And so we tend to use in physiology the molality concentration. So if we want one molality of sodium chloride, you can see how they're very similar, but they're actually going to be a little bit different. We would still weigh out our 58.5 grams of sodium chloride and we would put that into our flask. But when we add in the water, we're actually going to add in 1,000 milliliters of water. And we know exactly how much water we're adding. So the sodium chloride is in the flask. We're adding in our water. Here's our one liter mark, but our final volume is actually going to be more than one liter because the salt takes up space in the flask, as well as the 1,000 milliliters of water. So in molarity, we don't define how much water we're using. In molality, we do define how much water we're using. And so that'll be important when we're talking about IVs. Okay? When you talk about IV solutions, you wanna know how much water you're actually giving to your patients. And so we use molality Okay, when we talk about physiology type things. Now that doesn't mean in textbooks you won't see molarity and then osmolarity and milliosmolarity. Uh, those uh, calculations are done, but typically we want to use molality, osmolality, and milliosmolality because we define exactly how much water we're actually using. So you'll see little m for molality, OS little m for osmolality, and then milliosmolality. And these will be the concentrations that we uh, typically will use in our physiology class. Now, just knowing molality, though, is misleading 
when you're looking at osmosis. So we want to take this a step further and go from molality to osmolality. Now you could do the same thing with molarity, molarity to osmolarity and so forth. Uh, it's the same calculations, uh, but I'm now going to stick with molality. So if we have, for example, one molality sodium chloride and one molality glucose, you might be thinking that these are actually the same concentrations, okay? But in reality, they aren't, okay? One molality of sodium chloride is actually different than one molality of glucose, and here's why. If you take sodium chloride and you place it into the flask, there's two things that are taking place. One, you're going to see the salt dissolve. But the second thing that's going to take place is you're going to see the formation of ions. So when salt is put into solution, you get one sodium ion, Na plus, and one chloride ion, Cl minus. So for every one sodium chloride, you're actually getting two particles. So osmolality tells us the total molality of the solution. So it's total molality. Well, if you have sodium chloride ionizing, you actually have one molal of sodium and one molal of chlorine because it's ionizing into two particles. So the osmolality would be equal to one molal of sodium plus one molal of chlorine. So our total osmolality is two osmoles. Another way to think of that is I can take one molality times two particles in solution, and that would give me my two osmoles because it's really total number of particles that you have in solution. Now let's do the same thing with glucose. If we take our flask and we put glucose, okay, in order to make a one molal glucose, it would take 180 grams because it's 180 grams per mole to make a one molal glucose or a one molar glucose. But when we put the glucose into solution, it only dissolves. It does not ionize in solution. And so the molecule stays as C6H12O6. They're not separating from each other in solution. So we have one molal of glucose in solution. And so the osmolality is equal to the total molality, which is one molal. And so our final answer is one osmol. Another way to think about that is we start with one molality. How many particles do you get in solution? One. And so therefore you have one osmol as the concentration. So molality becomes something that's misleading. One molality of sodium chloride and one molality of glucose are not equal to each other in terms of concentration. Because it turns out we have two osmoles of sodium chloride and we have one osmole of glucose. So let's look at that in terms of how that might work and if we had a container with a membrane, the membrane is only permeable to the water and not permeable to the solutes. We have one molal of sodium chloride and we have one molal of glucose. And these are separated by this membrane. 
Well, we now know that there's actually two osmoles on the sodium chloride side and only one osmole on the glucose side. So if this membrane doesn't allow the solutes to move across, then we can determine which way osmosis will take place. So to predict osmosis, okay, we have to know osmolality, or we have to know milli osmolality. And I'll show you that in just a second. Okay, but we have to know the total number of particles. And so osmosis, by definition, is water moving from low solutes to high solutes. Well, the low solute is on the glucose side. The high solutes are on the sodium chloride side. So we know that water, in this situation, is going to move from the one osmole side over to the two osmole side. And so we can think of this as, I like to say, solutes suck. Right? The higher concentration of solutes is drawing water okay, towards it. And again, the, the purpose here of saying that the membrane doesn't allow the solutes to move is so that you understand that in osmosis, the solutes can't be freely permeable if you want to have osmosis actually taking place. So the membrane is only permeable to the water and not to the solutes. But if we had just looked at molality, then we wouldn't have been able to predict osmosis because that's misleading. You would think they're the same. But in actuality, they are different osmolalities. In order to determine milliosmolality, we're just doing a metric system conversion. So if I have two osmoles of something and I want to determine how many milliosmoles that would be, then I'm going to multiply by 1,000 milliosmoles, because that's what milli represents, 1,000, 1,000 milliosmoles per one osmole. And so here, osmoles cancel, 2 times 1,000, a 2 osmole concentration is 2,000 milli osmoles. One more example. If you had a situation where you had sodium bicarbonate, and if I told you that you had one molal of sodium bicarbonate, could you figure out the osmolality? So in order to do this, you have to understand how this ionizes in solution, or does it not ionize at all? Well, sodium bicarbonate does ionize in solution. It actually becomes sodium and bicarbonate, H. CO3 minus. So it actually is the same as sodium chloride. It becomes two particles in solution. And so to determine the osmolality, it's one molality times two particles. And so this is a two osmol concentration. Now you may be asking uh, yourself, Mr. Linder, how do I know that? Well, that's where chemistry comes into play. You have to know when something is a polyatomic anion or even polyatomic cations. So you would want to memorize your polyatomic cations and anions so you can determine how things ionize in solution so that you can figure out how many particles you have. And that way you'll be able to calculate the osmolality and then the milliosmolality. So I hope that was helpful. Thanks for watching. And in the next video, we'll calculate real-world IV solutions and talk about tonicity.